trauma. So you kind of see how this relates to trauma, right? There are two paths to trauma that we identify. One is an acute life threat reaction. This could be a sexual assault, this could be a car crash, this could be a thing that you survive. And to me, this is more correlating with the free state, where there's a huge buildup of energy, and maybe you were capable of escaping, but you were stopped from escaping. And to me, this is more like PTSD. Uh, PTSD, I think, is still considered an anxiety disorder. Right? So there's a ton of flight, fight, anxiousness associated with PTSD. Um, and part of PTSD is a specific stressor and reliving of the event, flashbacks, and being stuck in that state. To me, that's PTSD that correlates with acute life threat reaction and free state. And the second path to trauma is a chronic disruption of connectedness. To me, this is more of the flight, fight, and shutdown states. Uh, this is a complex of seeing PTSD, abandonment, chronic abuse, neglect, domestic violence, these ongoing things that constantly cut off your connection to safety. This is chronic disruption of safety. And of course, it's not just cut and dry, but to me, it's the basic idea. Human beings stay stuck in trauma. We feel fear along with bodily sensations. When we come out of shutdown and that numbness goes away and the sympathetic arousal kicks in, that, that's terrifying. That can be terrifying. So you know, like we said, we need to go first from the sympathetic arousal from shutdown. This can feel like panic or rage coming out of freeze. So that experience and having all these new sensations come in is a very scary, it can be a very scary thing for a lot of people. So we have to uncouple fear from the process of work coming up the ladder. So that means more and more and more body awareness and realizing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And then being more curious of the process than evaluating. What I mean by that is, if you're looking inward while you're meditating, are you judging it or are you watching it out of curiosity? So if you want to gain more bodily awareness, you really have to kind of like watch it like you're curious about what's happening. And then it's like, oh, okay, that, that feeling and it's, I'm twitching right there, and this image pops in my mind. And just watch the process unfold versus judging it and asking why. Why am I, why did that pop in my mind? Why is that there? What an evaluation. So evaluation and curiosity are different things. And then med, you can do this through meditation, yoga, and then adding some somatic additions and therapy. So just these little easy things of like, where does that live in your body? It's a very easy somatic kind of question of bringing their attention inward in a safe way and recognizing where stuff might live or what it might feel like to be in that moment. But th these can help to take the fear away from it and really like getting to know yourself all over again. And if you're working with someone who's dissociative, they have no idea what's going on like here down. They're pretty good with the stuff that happens in their head, but here down, it is completely cut off. So you really have to start from like, can you feel your feet on the ground? Can you wiggle your toes? And work your way not at the bottom, but like small bits. <clears throat> Humans stay stuck in trauma. Uh, stories that we create keep us stuck in trauma. The thoughts, beliefs, images, blame, judgment, shame that we have toward ourselves. Animals don't, in the wild don't do this. Uh, we do. No one believed me. It was my fault. I shouldn't have or I deserve it. Stuff like this. It keeps us stuck in a traumatized state. If we believe it was your fault, uh, what are my chances of working my way up the political ladder? That belief is, it will limit, it will, it will cap off what you're capable of in, in climbing the ladder. Not that it's easy to turn that thought off, I'm not saying that it's, just stop doing that, I'm not saying that. But the mechanism, like that thought, those, these kind of thoughts do keep us down the ladder. Isolating ourselves keeps us stuck in trauma. Um, it can be important for coming out of a shutdown, I think potentially, but so, safe and social cues from safe people Co-regulation can be really, really important to coming up the ladder. Keeping a secret keeps us stuck in trauma. This prevents the process of mobilizing and using our sympathetic energy. If we keep a secret, that means we just kind of have to stay in order, right? All the stuff that comes along with keeping something secret, the judgment and blame that stays with us. But if we tell someone, a safe adult who might go to CPS or be able to do something else, it's gonna help get us unstuck. It's gonna mobilize us. Now we can now that energy's gonna come up. But if we just keep a secret, it's gonna stay in there. And then recognize the problem and admitting the need for help is necessary for globalization. If we keep, if we keep ignoring problems, we're gonna stay stuck in that shutdown or that freeze place. 